This is why I love cold therapy. It saved my life. Everything changes when we step into the cold. Hi, Victoria. Welcome to the Stepping Into the Cold podcast. It's great to have you here. If you please want to tell us about yourself uh, and tell us what you do. Yeah, um, I'm a PT in Leicester, owner of Bumpfoot UK Studios. Um, I train everybody. <laughs> um, my own personal mission is just to become as resilient as possible, mind and body. Um, and my focus is on training people within the gym so that their life is better outside of those walls. Um, because I, I just believe that that's the way in which we experience the world around us is with our bodies and our minds. So it's really important that we create a nice balance and are able to use the tools around us in order to facilitate that. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm about. <laughs> nice. So the podcast is all about uh, stepping into the cold. What got you stepping into the cold? A uh, bit of your story. So what was it that got you into cold therapy? Um, OK, so I'd heard about the Wim Hof thing. <laughs> yeah. um, a while ago and I, every now and then I dabbled in it um, my partner Ruth she started doing it consistently a while ago um, and I was just like whatever you're showing off wasn't really into it and then earlier this year I caught Covid but I had it really bad so like I couldn't I couldn't leave the bed like I was basically not training which is not like me um, for like two and a half three weeks and then when I came out of it I still felt horrific for like even now I'd say I'm still coming back from it but my body was in bits because I hadn't really been moving but my mental health had taken a dive which I hadn't really experienced before yeah. but because I was off for so long as well I had to close my studio um so which also meant that obviously I wasn't making money as well um and I was just at a point where I was like I have no desire left, which was the scariest thing. Um, I had no want for anything. You could have said, here's a million pounds, just have it. Um, and I would have been like, just keep it, there's no point. Um, and I just got to a point where at one point I was like, I now have negative thoughts in my head, which I'd never had before. Yeah. Um, and I said to my partner, like, I, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to listen to or have that. Um, and she was like, right, okay, we have to do something. So one of the things I did was I literally just created space for myself and just started moving really slowly. So just going for walks. And I thought, okay, what else can I do? Um, and I was like, I'll try and find other people that inspire me. And I read a uh, Ross Edgeley's book where he went around the UK swimming. And I was literally like living for that book. I was waking up each day just to see what would, what would happen and like his story. And then I found like, I was emotionally responding to his story and I started to feel a little bit more alive and the struggles he went through physically and mentally. And then I was like, I need to know more about like humans becoming more human. Like what he did was amazing. Um, so then I read another book called The Comfort Crisis, which was amazing. Again, about a guy who went and submerges himself in, I think it's Alaska, and has to deal with the elements and things. And I was like, okay, there's something in this discomfort and creating a resilient body which is affecting the mindset of people like I'd always known that being physical and exercising does help with your mind but this was like a different level so I was like if I can create a more resilient body and a more resilient mind and kind of like dip in and out of that discomfort zone to create that resilience then maybe if it hits me again it won't hit me as hard because I've got all these tools in place yeah. So I thought, well, I'll give this cold shower malarkey a go. And for the first month, I was turning it unknowingly. So you know you have like that click on your shower and it stops you have to push it again. Yeah, yeah. I was turning it to the thing, not realising that I needed to click it a bit further. And I was like, what is Ruth doing? This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel that much different. It's a bit cooler, but... <laughs> and then she was like, yeah, you need to turn it all the way, love. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Um and then it started and I, the brain freeze was horrific. But then I was like, wait a minute, I've literally needed one coffee. I feel really awake. I have absolutely no negative vibe about me. I would literally have my shower and then stand in the daylight. So it's another thing I started doing, yeah. um, which then eventually led to barefoot walking in the morning as well. Yeah. Um, so everything together, I just started to feel so much more connected to myself and my environment before actually 
accessing technology or worrying about stuff that doesn't really matter because I found as soon as my mind was in a better place and my body was starting to repair and I did that focus then I was able to reopen my studio properly launch my new product I was more open to seeing family and friends in a way that I wasn't before I think before I used to get a little bit anxious around groups of people all the time yeah this went um like if you ask anybody I'm not apart from coaching I'm not really a social butterfly I really like to be on my own yeah. um but yeah, I've been going out, seeing friends, family, whereas before I'd be so reluctant because I just wanted my own space, whereas now I'm just a lot more open. And I think part of that has been from allowing myself to be more vulnerable and let others see me be more vulnerable, which I was quite scared of. I, growing up, I was very much like, don't let people see you cry in public, um, things like that. And then with the cold shower as well it's like another level of vulnerability that you're choosing for your body um and it's just i know there's so much more to go with the journey and that's what's so exciting um but i've even started asking my clients just try it like some of them i have just dip your face in cold water when you start to get tired or around that three o'clock when you're in the office and even then they're starting to see the benefits so it's a powerful thing it's undervalued i'd say massively because it's a natural medicine if you ask me yeah yeah definitely so let's just talk about um when you're first in the shower and you're like turning it over not realizing there's that like click to go that extra mile um talk to me about that that shock response and sort of you, you talked about the brain freeze so what was your process of getting over that and how long was you sort of managing to stay in the shower um so i when I did it, to, when I did it to like the halfway one where I was getting it wrong, I was like three minutes, four minutes. I was like, this is easy. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but when I clicked it all the way, it was kind of like a okay. getting in. Um, even today, if I go hot to cold, I still have to gradually be like one, two. And then once you're in though, that initial shock, it used to be, I used, to, I'm not gonna, I used to find it horrific yeah. and I'd let out an involuntary yelp, whereas now I get in and the shock's still there, but I have been doing, you know, the Wim Hof breath work yeah. and that instantly helps. I, as soon as I'm in and I get that, that jolt through my body, I was saying this to someone the other day, it feels like, you know, when you've been dying of thirst and then you drink something, I get the same sensation where it's like my skin has been really thirsty yeah um, and it's almost like a relief and then in my mind I'm just imagining swimming around like a really warm lagoon no. <laughs> sounds a bit weird and then I then I'm in it and it's fine but um I haven't got to the stage where I've started to measure or time so much because I'm just enjoying it for what it is yeah um I think if I took it to the next level I would start doing that but right now it's just part of a okay I wake up I do x y and z that's my structure I know like mentally that puts me in a powerful mindset for the day yeah. and after that then I'm in a place where I can give to others um so yeah there's part of me that doesn't want to dial down into it too much and become obsessive over I have to hit a certain amount of time yeah um, never never be like that it's, it's all about what's right for you um mm. and the next sort of question is that sort of are you at the stage now where you still get the butterflies, you're still a bit nervous getting in, you sort of like touched on that, or you looking forward to, because you know you're going to get that endorphin release. And for instance, like you said, it just that energy it gives you throughout the day. So where's your mindset at when you're sort of either getting ready to turn it or you're getting prepared to get into the cold shower? Um, there's different mindsets. So if I've come in straight from training, I can't wait to get in there. Nice. Um, if I've woken up and I've had a bad night's sleep and I'm groggy, I don't want to do it. I'm honest. I really don't want to do it, but I know the power of it coming out afterwards. Yeah. And I will literally stop. So one of the things that I do is I try and post when I do it as much as possible because it not only keeps me accountable, but I know it's inspiring other people to take the leap as well. Like yeah. I've had so many people message me and they're like, it looks so hard. And I'm like, Honestly, just start really slow. Go to halfway on the cold. I did that for a month. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the, uh, I, I actually prefer that mindset because afterwards I feel like I've accomplished something a bit more. I've 
beat in my mind if you know what I mean yeah um, but now it's really hot like this I'm like oh maybe I could set up something with a hose outside after I've been for a run that might be a no it would definitely so your, your body's very conditioned uh, you know with your your personal training so do you still get uh, a lot of muscle soreness um, and have you found it gives you any benefits if you do yeah massively so on a day where I've done a run um, I will bath instead of shower yeah um, right. so basically I used to get a lot of hip and SI joint problems um, especially after running it get aggravated if I've done a little bit too much now as soon as I come in I make the ice bath I get in I, I literally have no issue whatsoever okay. like nothing like no knee pain no ankle pain no hip pain um but i have started to, to slowly do barefoot runs as well um which has helped a lot because it also for some people it improves the way that they run okay so i think that coupled with the recovery um from the ice bath it really really does help um i also prefer them because once you're in i don't know if it's because your body naturally starts to then heat the water i find it quite relaxing so i can yeah. sit in there for quite a bit um whereas with the showers you're in it there's no it takes a little bit of a more of a mental battle i'd say it's two totally different experiences and if you think of one so like you get in it, it doesn't matter how cold it is obviously with that mindset you you, you can there you can comfortably breathe but if you're in the shower mm -hmm. and it's spraying in your face it, it, the, <laughs> you, you know your your your, your vagal nerve or your sympathetic nervous system that fight or flight response is so active uh, and yeah, if you're, yeah. for instance, go into cold and you're in that sort of eight to 10 degrees mark, then, you, you know, you, all you want to do is you're like, you know, it's a, it's a battle in itself. Yeah. Um, sometimes I've done it and it's made me involuntarily burst out laughing. I just stand there laughing in the shower because I can't do anything else. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's kind of a good reaction. It's always good to, to laugh, I guess. So you, um, you you talked about that uh, you had COVID and it, it's good to hear that you're you're on the mend and not but you maybe you've still got a few sort of lagging issues I think that they're called long COVID or, or those sort of things. Um, what was it? Um, you, you mentioned that it took you several weeks to even start to get the energy and the, the motivation. What was the, the the biggest thing? Was it the the mindset or finding that energy or that will to start moving forward again that you was your best takeaway from the cold or was it a combination of both um i think i think it's a combination of both i think with the cold therapy because there's because there's a physicality to it as well as a mindset part to it you can it's I don't know how to explain it. It's not like you can, it's not like a fixation, but it's something that you want to, you want to conquer. Yeah. And it's a very human thing to conquer because you have to be so connected to your body. It's not like saying, okay, I want to deadlift a hundred kilos. I'm going to work my way towards that. It's yeah. kind of different. Um, I can't explain it. I can own that. That's probably the closest that I can explain is that it connects you in a way, I say even almost spiritually to your body that you can't get from oh, what well, I haven't been able to find from any other thing. Okay, let's so. let me let me try to reframe it. So um you 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 were very lethargic, let's say after COVID. Um you had sort of uh you were battling you you were saying sort of like with it sort of increased like negative thoughts. Um uh -huh. so that process and it's sort of you picked up a book about this guy that was sort of going uh swimming around the uk and then you picked up another book something about the comfort zone um mm -hmm. i can't remember what it was called i don't know if you just want to repeat it um so that's called the comfort crisis the, the comfort crisis and you, you said yeah. that you was really resonated with these books and you thought right there's clearly something in it uh mm -hmm. your, your partner ruth was already trying to get you there but that was it took you that was the final milestone for the step for you to to get actually get in um so when you oversee sort of down a lethargic what was the uh, sort of steps that you sort of noticed when you first got started obviously you you're going through that 
fight or flight response. You, you, you're battling that. But how long was it really until you sort of started to feel an increase in energy or was that quite instant? Um, yeah, I felt after I dried off, you, what, when you first come out and you've been really, really cold and the normal air hits you, your body then, I think it's like you vasodilate again. Is that what happens? And then all your blood comes to the surface and you go all pink. Yeah, yeah. Like when that moment hits, as soon as that hits, simultaneously, I just feel really refreshed. Like when I said I got in the shower, it's like my skin felt like I'd been thirsty or my body felt like it had been thirsty almost. And it was a relief now. Um, that tiny bit of time between the air hitting you um, and drying off, it just felt like, you know, when someone is like, when someone says to you, tomorrow's a new day, you can start again. It feels like that every time you come out. So then with that mental clarity and that physical freshness that you feel, you're ready to take on the day. Like I said before as well, like I would, being a coach, like coaches live off coffee, a lot of them do, um, especially when we do long hours. Um, but I was actually going from like four cups of coffee a day to one, maybe two. Nice. At a push. So yeah, I just, I'm all, I'm, I can't say enough about it really. Fantastic. So let's, let's bring it now to the, to the mindset. Um, did you notice sort of those negative thoughts or that clarity coming while you was in the shower? So you, you go first through the, the, the moment of it's cold, oh, I'm going to have to stop to you sort of like then hit this sort of equilibrium point, then to all of a sudden you, you just accept it or you surrender to the cold, you start enjoying it. Um, what was it that you sort of remember most about that clarity coming or those sort of negative thoughts sort of, I like to think of it when I was in, in the shower myself, of these things just draining away from me. And that, that's, you know, those big deep breaths that we take, mm -hmm. you breathe in and the water's running over you. And I just used, that's the way I, I had a life changing injury. And that's what got me into to the, into the cold. Uh, and so I used to have this thing of just like uh, pain free, get, get all off all the medication. So I, I constantly repeated a mantra in my head uh, and these things just started to happen. And that's why I just became so amazed with cold therapy. And I just, I'm interested to know what that sort of process, because a lot of people, it's, it, it is mental, the, the mental aspect really why a lot of people first step in and everybody I speak to all has great things to say about the power of cold. Mm -hmm. No, I completely agree. It's weird that you say that because when I'm in it, when I first did it, I liked it because I couldn't think about anything. Yes. Um, but now when I'm in there, I basically, I imagine it, um, basically like you said, like draining everything off me. But what I say is I release everything that no longer serves me. Nice. And that's my mantra while I'm in there. Um, and then, while I was doing it, the first few times I was also reading the book, Mal Robbins High Five, um, High yeah. Five Me or something it's called, uh, which went nicely with it. So I wasn't too, I have to stay in here or I, I've only done this, this is rubbish. So it didn't feed any of my negative thoughts. I was just like, oh, okay, well that like, this is as much as I can stand. I come out and I'm like, well, that's good. I've, I'm creating a baseline. So I'm just going to build on this each time. Um, and that's also part of the reason why I didn't put a timer because I wanted my body to tell me when, do you know what? You can go now. Yeah. Um, rather than staying in it. But yeah, I always say as well, like when I open the door from the shower as well, I'm stepping into the new, yeah. um, which is really, really nice. And it, I like if I genuinely do believe that energy sticks sometimes as well. And I think it is one of the ways you can cleanse your energy. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people think that's a bit woo, uh, but I'm a genuine believer in it. And I think there are ways like with the cold therapy, why connection with our body and spirit can all be done in these ways. Um, so, yeah. I think people, people, <laughs> try a little mantra. People need to try it before, obviously, they, to dis, like before disregarding it uh, and, mm -hmm. and sort of stick at it for two to three weeks just to break that, that barrier uh, and then ask them the same question. And I'm pretty sure I'm very confident that their, uh, their outlook would be completely different. I agree 100%, yeah. Yeah, so tell me, tell me about what's your... So, so have you ever done any open water 
sort of swimming or like gone into the from that book that you was reading about this guy that was swimming around the the uk um mm -hmm. did that encourage you to maybe drive to a coast or go to one of the reservoirs in leicestershire um and and just go and do a, an outdoor swim which would fall really well within your your barefoot walk in your your morning sun exposure yeah so um i am actually planning to go and do one of the reservoirs in leicester i haven't done it yet my partner went a few weeks ago with one of our friends um nice. and she said it's beautiful um my thing is i have so it will be my next challenge because I'm kind of a little bit scared of open water. I'm fine scuba diving. Yeah. Don't have a problem being under the water and breathing. Um, it's on the water for too long. Um, so that coupled with the cold, I'm like, oh, okay. So one of my friends has agreed to take me and we're going to do it in baby steps. <laughs> Perfect time of the year coming up now, though, to, to start getting you ready yeah. then for the winter. 100%. I want to also try and keep training outside as well into the cold yeah. throughout the winter. Um, so that's one of my reasons for keeping it up because um, who was it that I was reading? I was reading a, another book. Honestly, I've read so many books these last four or five months to get me back. Um, but it was saying how the human body is actually designed to change with the seasons. Yeah. So like you can match your training to that and it's designed to be resilient in the cold. So doing the cold therapy actually it like reconnects you with your natural bodies, um, not creation, but how you've been designed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see if it pays off when I'm <laughs> out in the garden in the snow deadlifting. <laughs> I, I think there's something great in that, potentially like a, a program for your for your clients. I think uh, you, you know the cold therapy market is is growing on a daily basis. So I I, mm -hmm. I think um, you, you know just trial and error and working out you from your own experience i think yeah. there's something really i just hearing it i was like oh that sounds really interesting <laughs> um, so what is um have you got uh, a most memorable experience where you you had a shift or a breakthrough where you mm -hmm. sort of got out and you was just like oh my god you, there was like an element that you stepped in and it was it was different from the other days yeah, there was, there was, um, it was a turning point where um, I'd gotten, gotten undressed, ready to get in the shower, and I went in, and as I went in, the sun, for some reason, it wasn't even, like, hot like this, but the sun just came straight through the, straight through the window and into the shower, and it was freezing, and I was standing there, and then time had passed, and I was like, I don't even know how long I've been standing here, and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't got the brain freeze, mm. like, or it was dull enough so then I was like I well, better get out I've got work and I got out and then I had that feeling on my skin and I was just like oh my gosh this feels like I can't express it, it just it honestly it felt like on a spiritual level yeah I just felt so great I was like now I want to go for like a barefoot run or I want to go out I just got to be outside now um yeah it was it's really empowering and I think that's really important and one of the ways you can use it as a tool and I say to my clients, like, you can dictate your mindset to start the day. And the more powerful that mindset in the morning, the likelihood, the, the better that your day is going to go. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is reconnecting your mind and your body. And I think that's the most efficient way to do it first thing in the morning. Like, walks are good, but the cold shower is, is something else. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about... Um the way that you you use it so you do you get up in the morning and your first thing that you do is you, you go for a quick cold shower or or do you work out first and then have a cold shower but what's that sort of process i'm interested to know because and then i'll tell you what what i i what i do and how, where what i use cold therapy for okay so i wake up and in my jammies <laughs> at 5 a.m i run downstairs i put the kettle on and then i leave the house and then i go for a barefoot walk and i try to go further and further each time even if it's raining and i've just got like a vest on i still do it in in the cold it's like a non-negotiable and the goal is to try and go further or find the most gravelly path that i possibly can and just really enjoy feeling the muscular response on my feet but also listening to the birds and stuff 
Um, then I come in and then I have my coffee. I do my five minutes sitting in my hips uh, to open my hips up. And then I'll either train or if I'm coaching, I'll then get straight into the shower. Um, otherwise, I, uh, I shower after I've trained here. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit similar. So uh, me personally, I love barefoot walking. I love walking yeah. sort of. So I, I, when I'm in Spain, I take a I take a lap and then I get down onto the beach and I walk with the sun in my face. And then at the end, I normally will jump into the sea do some breath work on the beach or, or whatever, and then come home. And then I have a cold shower, but I, I, I tend to split my, so after like my getting ready period, is like getting, getting in the shower, getting ready for work and whatever needs to happen for the day. But that's my anchor point of switching from my morning routine to into the day. Uh, and yeah. so that, that's what I, I, I love. And so it's, for me, it's like, okay, this is, I'm in game mode. Uh, you, you know, I'm switching from from what I need to do for me for my health to all of a sudden, right? It's, it's game on. This is like it's it's time for action. Uh, yeah, and I think when you do that as well, you feel like you've taken the time to charge your body, and then when you're doing that, you're willing to give more of yourself rather than feeling like people are taking energy. Yeah, because you you you've allowed yourself to access that headspace. You're like you said, like you're in game mode. You're in power mode. You're ready to make change, you know? Um, and I use that if like, for example, today, even though I've had one cold shower, I'll come around like three o'clock. If I've been on the laptop all day, I'll jump and quickly have a cold shower to hit the second part of my day rather than, you know, how sometimes people feel a little bit lethargic after three o'clock. Um, but then I find like, yeah, I'm boosted for the rest of the day. Yeah. Sometimes I have around my cycle, um, had a cold shower before bed to lower my body temperature so that I sleep better. That's yeah. been really useful. I've played with that a few times. The only issue with that is that it's so much colder because yeah. your skin as well is so much more sensitive around that time. It, it does feel horrific, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So you can find, so one of the things is when you talk with your clients, there's a lot of science now around climatizing. So when I first got into it and my first calling was uh, Wim Hof, heard him on Joe Rogan uh, and I'd literally tried everything else I'd on, I was on morphine for over 12 years pain oh, meds wow. sleeping tablets uh, and it obviously almost cost me my life being on the, these medications for so long and I'd sort of at my wits end and I was like I've got to try something new heard this crazy mm -hmm. guy speaking on Wim Hof but he said something that just called me and I was like I'm gonna try this and I've never looked back since. That's what, oh where cryo shower came from, the frustration, obviously the warmer, the temperatures, but I've just, you know, that whole sort of process is just, it's, it's changed my life. And that's what's like now, I love speaking to people like yourself and just hearing your story and why people will do it. But fundamentally it's to encourage others to obviously step into the cold uh, and, you know, listen to people like yourself, what got you in there? Because fundamentally, we're all like each other. It's just mm -hmm. different variants of degree of experience. Um, you know, life life happens for all of us and it just it doesn't doesn't stop. It either, like, it either is happening for us or to us. And it's, we get to choose which one of that is. Yeah, so, 100%. And so- I was saying the other day, sorry, I was saying the other day that, um, one of the most beneficial things you can ever realize in life is that everything is your fault. Because once you realize it's your fault, you then have the power to change it. Exactly. Some people aren't prepared to take on that. So yeah. once you unlock that key, um, I think life does become a little bit easier. <laughs> Definitely. I, I've, so uh, funny enough, so some, I did a bit of work around this. So I've been doing, um, I'm actually doing an eight month uh, breath work course. I didn't want to do anything that was short, like a two, three week course. I wanted to do something where I could get a real deep understanding so we can develop this into our app because the app's mm -hmm. all about uh, pain management, recovery. So if you was to use our app when you've, after you've trained, you can input your pain and over time with the cold therapy, you can sort of what, see how long it takes for you to recover after, whether it's a, an injury or, or sports recovery. Um, mm -hmm. But that, it's that sort of, that same process. Um, and I think uh, just coming to understand where we are. So it's like, whether it's our fault or somebody else's fault, 
but that doesn't really matter because once we realize that and accept it, as you've just said, it's like it's only us that can let it go and be like, okay, I'm the it's only what I can I'm the only person that can release that. Um, and that was a really I had a really big transformational shift a, a couple of weeks ago around that whole thing where I'd been putting blame on everybody else and really it came down to that I felt inadequate still based on my life changing injury that I wasn't mm -hmm. that, I didn't feel like that same person and I was thinking my god everything has been stacked on from that one thing whereas I'd masked it with all these other things um yeah. you know that operation was you know that operation went wrong it was their fault whatever and I was thinking no 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 I'm the only one that can can deal with that and that was it's really nice to hear you say that Oh, nice. I'm glad that you found your 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 path from that as well. Like I, I do genuinely feel like once you once you go through that process and that part of your mind is unlocked, it's such a gift in in itself. And from there, like that is a vulnerable that is a, one of the ways in which you open up and you are more vulnerable by accepting that. But through doing that, I find you're also more accessible by other people. So, and it sounds stupid, but like you can love a lot harder. You can understand if somebody's angry at you and you think, okay, well, why are they acting like that? What's the pain that they're they're doing? Like even when I see people trolling people, I'm like, oh, that person's that person's got a bit of pain they're dealing with, rather than it being the actual person they're directing that pain at. Um, mm -hmm. so you do find that you're you you have a much more open mind and you're more of an observer of the world rather than just reactive. Yeah. Um but yeah, that, that's yeah. Congratulations, that's like a massive thing. It took thank, me ages. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. So it just just us just having that brief conversation, it, it made me think about what you said to me before we got on the call about your previous career to where you are. So I, I would love people to know sort of like part of that transformation of what your your past career was to to where you are now. What got you to make those decisions? How cold therapy is incorporated into your life and what, what's Victoria's future plans? Where's she going? What's she planning on doing? Uh, and and is cold therapy a part of that? Um, well, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think end goal for me would be to have a facility somewhere um, that's a little bit different from what's out there. I would love to have cold therapy as part of programming for people when they come and train with us. Um, as well as like barefoot modules, things that really re reconnect people with their, their mind and their body. Lovely like grass area, maybe have it on like a farm or something like that kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, having come, sorry, I should have done that the other way around. I used to be uh, an accountant um, and I lived in Jersey and that's basically what people do. They either become accountants or lawyers or um, something like that. Um, and then what happened was I decided that I wanted to change the way I looked. I wasn't fat. I was overweight and unhealthy for my frame. And I just felt like tired all the time. I didn't want to get up. Um, so then I decided to, I wanted to go to the gym. So I did what everyone does, go to the gym, just run on the treadmill for an hour. Didn't see a lot of change, decided, uh, started realizing that even though I was losing weight I was still like a little bit skinny fat yeah. and then a friend of mine was like download a program from this place um going to the gym and start doing weights so I went in and I looked for the biggest guy I could find and I was like I'm gonna make friends with him because I'm scared of the weight section and <laughs> he's the biggest guy in here so he's gonna be my friend yeah. um so I went and did that and I'd ask him, like, am I doing this right? Things like that. But from there, I actually realized that I was taking control of my life in a way that I hadn't been before. I think before I'd been quite passive and kind of allowed things to go. And that's well, everyone does. That, I'm going to go do that. And everyone goes to drinks after work. Most nights I'm going to go do that. Um, and it wasn't getting me in a good place. And then I was like, wait a minute. I'm starting to look better. I feel better. I'm having time to myself separate from my relationship. I've got my almost like my own identity, which I didn't realize that I was lacking. Um, and then I used to sit, my window at work used to face the gym that I used to go to. And then one day I was having a really rubbish day and I was bored. I was just moving my mouse around, <laughs> not actually doing any work. Um, and then I had to go to a board meeting and I came out, I was like, I'm fed up of talking to these old gits. <laughs> and my friend was like, quit. And I was like, 
okay. And then I just did it. I went into the director's office and I thought, I just don't want to do this anymore. Um, it was really weird, but it just seemed like the completely right thing to do. Um, and even the relationship I was in then, but within the, that week that ended, um, we sold our house. I went traveling. I came back and went to the UK. I worked in a really good gym there um, where I met my partner. Um, and then now she works in Burton. So we moved up towards Leicester. So it had to be kind of close. Um, and now I have my studio. Um, we opened, or well, I opened it just coming out of lockdown. So it's constantly been a struggle because obviously we had no support from the government because we didn't have any previous income. So that was annoying, but I felt to the point where I was like, I just feel like I'm fighting and I'm fighting this. I'm getting more and more tired of opening, closing. And then when the COVID hit, that's when I was like, I'm done. I don't know what I want. I have like no desire for anything. I don't know if I want to do this, but I don't want to do anything else. I was just in a really, really dark place. Um, and I was just kind of numb to everything. And I think the cold therapy and that book, the book, I think the book is what, I think I said to Ruth the other day, I was like, this book, I feel like it saved my life. And then the cold therapy, it just, it reconnected everything within me. Um, I literally feel right now like I'm, <laughs> I sound crazy to a lot of people out there, but it's crazy until you know, when you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, and then now it's, for example, Ruth a while back said to me, why don't you, because I try, I was a little bit busy and she's like, why don't you just have your shower later or just push it back and stuff? And I burst out crying and I was like, I can't, that's my thing. That's my system. I can't start my day without that. That's the non-negotiable area because it's so, so important. Um, so all I can say is what you're doing is amazing, making everybody aware of it, especially with the podcast and stuff. Um, but it is an unrated medicine that I think can help a lot of people physically and mentally. And the greatest thing is, it can't be the government can't tax cold therapy showers <laughs> yeah. you know so um there is always a way with it and it will push you out of your comfort zone which is the best bit because you don't truly know who you can become until your back's against the wall or your body's in a position where it forcibly has to adapt yeah um and i think that in itself is a beautiful human trait because i believe like we're here to expand we're here to experience and one of the ways of doing that is reconnecting with our body. Um, so that's why this coupled so well, not only with myself, but I feel like I went through all this experience so that I can then shine a light on it for my clients and then they can enjoy this experience as well. Um, so I actually think that in hindsight, this is just the universe almost rerouting my journey to be a little bit more specific and coming away from the normal mainstream of fitness and being like no the simple the basics do them well from like a body a body level create that body baseline look at the tools you've been given um and then just push from there rather than almost like hammering your body into a state you know so yeah <laughs> nice yeah, so you turned around and said these, these are my non-negotiable so it reminded me of um so my path really started in 2019 where I, almost the medication almost cost me my life and that, it was that drastic change had to happen and I had these like uh, non-negotiables which was about reprogramming my mindset from all of the, the bad habits because I was dark depression drug and alcohol abuse to sort of cope the coping mechanisms and um, I used to get really stressed when my routine when I had when something had to happen and I had to change my, or be adaptable to other people's routines. And it really knocked me off. And it's still take, it's, well, I'm just overcoming it. And it's about sort of uh, being able to go off script, mm -hmm. but being able to come back, that, that that is our baseline, but being flexible enough where it doesn't control us, as in a, it, it's taken over. And then for the next hour, we're just on this negative thought train of like, my God, yeah. my routine has put me off. I'm not gonna do all these things. Uh, and there's there's power in that of just going, like you said, you know, I don't need to be in the shower for three, four or five minutes. When my body mm -hmm. says, I'm done, I'm done. And it's it's taking that skill set that you've learned and applying it to that. Because sometimes 
shit happens mm -hmm. and, and it's been a, a, a adaptable to be able to move that so it's it was really interesting here and you, you you say that and i just wanted to share sort of that from from my own personal experience that obviously if whether you take something away from it or, or whatever but it was really it was, it was really nice to see um so i really like just to hone down in um you, you thank you very much for your your your, your story uh, and sort of like the the old career and the sort of transformation into the new um and really the the important role that sort of cold therapy has played for you so what is um how do you see sort of cold therapy playing into your into your sort of future plans you sort of said that you see that that's coming into your you sort of your studios as they're growing and you, you're just allowing things to be and to sort of grow naturally rather than sort of you know you've already experienced what the stress was like of when things fall out of our control and some things are out of our control so i'm just keen to to hear more about like you, you mentioned that you're going to commit to go into a reservoir and it's just I, I want to just hear more about what your sort of uh, plans are with sort of cold therapy and the way that you are looking to sort of incorporate that more into your life. So there's a company that I've spoken to. I can't remember what the second part of it. I think they're called Urban Tub. I don't know. So I really like. Have you heard of them? I yeah. Think they're quite cool at the moment. Um, but I love their ethos. I love that the guy just gets in in his tub. Um, it just it just seems really natural, like a like a really like organic business that's being grown. Yeah. Um, so having that eventually, I would like to not only have that in my house. So when I have the bath option, it is outside, um, and it is with the the big ice cubes that we have frozen, and then I'm putting that in, so I can come from that straight out of my run, so I can stay in nature as much as possible. Yeah. However, like with the showers, I'll continue them, but like I said, like even as a on on a yearly um, seasonal thing. Um, it's going to be so important because I do want to be able to train, like I said, outside in the seasons and then create that for other people. So that would be part of it. So I want to be showering outside in winter. I don't want this just to be a summer thing. Yeah. Um, I think eventually, I think this is actually going to be in every gym. Yeah. I think it's going to be massive. And I think, especially from a shower point of view, it's an easy, it's an easy win rather than paying for all the tubs um but yeah it would be great to start incorporating that as soon as possible for other people but yeah for myself i would like to maybe because we did go to the lake district a couple of years ago um in a break between the first lockdown and the second one and we went in the water it, i think it was winter we were up to our stomachs and it was absolutely freezing i would love to go back and retest that yeah. that would be great we randomly just got out of the car and decided to go in the lake which was weird but <laughs> now it would be good to like have a little kick about once in there <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah I think from an experience point of view I would like to incorporate as much as possible from a business perspective um, it's definitely in future models or future ideas that I have um, but yeah I think it's I think it's I think it's just going to blow up more and more to be honest yeah definitely. Uh, in my head I'm like got to make sure I'm ahead of the curve <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, it's been absolutely amazing. I've just got, before I hand over the floor to you for the closing questions, what would you say to somebody that is thinking about trying cold therapy or they've tried it and they, they got put off because of that fight or flight response uh, and they're like, this isn't for me. But So what would you say to somebody that's either thinking of starting or that sort of hasn't got the courage to step back in? What can we do? What can you say to them to get them back in? So what I would say is don't feel like you have to do it right. Don't feel like there's a script and you have to be in for a certain amount of time or anything like that. All you've got to think about is I'm going to progress. I don't want perfect. So you can just start off with maybe waking up and dipping your face in a in the cold water. It doesn't have to have ice and just maybe colder than it was before. Maybe spending a little bit more time just where you're in that place of discomfort. Maybe start off with just when I when it was completely cold. When I first started off, I was putting my arm in and putting the wet in, and then getting the rest sorted. I wasn't going all the way in. 
Um, and then even my head wasn't in. And then when my head started to go and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like I'm starting over again. So there is no wrong, there's no wrong way to do it unless you're setting boundaries put there by other people or by expectation. Um, so with that in mind, just you're going to have to drop all the ego about it, allow vulnerability um, and just do it bit by bit. Some people start with just putting their hand in a cold pan. It can be that simple. Um, but once you've done it as well, and you've got your way of doing it. Definitely use it as a tool. So, for example, if I don't manage to get my cold shower in the morning or a tub, cold tub, um, I will work it into my day in some way at some point. And I know that tool is there for me. I know it's going to happen in the day. I just, like you said, sometimes you have to you have to ride the wave throughout the day, right? Mm -hmm. um, no one's going to step in the shower when you're in there and be like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be strange. <laughs> exactly. Like <laughs> it's your own experience. No one can tell you what your body is feeling or what your mind is feeling. Um, yeah. So it's so important to just figure out what works for you. It's no one's gonna. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. Yeah. That would be my. Right, you're doing it that. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just suddenly pop in <laughs> with the clipboard. <laughs> Minus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, Victoria, thank you so much. What we like to do is when we finish off, we like to hand over the floor. Uh, any closing comments that you want to share, um, please sort of tell people what your social handles are. We will put them in the copy of the, the text, but sometimes this might go to some platforms where it's just uh, all through the audio. So obviously, please let people know where they can find you, if they're in your local area or if you've got a digital a fitness uh, program where they can find also find that and like do your training workouts mm -hmm. okay um well my handle is i think it's coach vamp or vamp coach sorry let me just double check if i'm not great at it it's vamp coach v-a-m-p coach all one word um on instagram um i'm also on tiktok as victoria protzlo there's quite a lot of the cold showers in there um me shivering or being brain frozen and just dribbling <laughs> they're a little bit less edited because i try to get them in one shot <laughs> um but yeah we also have a six-week program that's going we're based in leicester and at the end of the day my goal is to teach people the tools so that they can enjoy life a little bit more for some people that means being able to run after their child um, and play with them go on adventures for other people that means just moving with less pain um, I don't niche down. So our gym and our programs are open to everybody because obviously I want to help as many people as possible. Um, but with the cold water therapy, you can start that whenever. It's only going to cost you whatever your water bill is. <laughs> and even then you can jump in the local reservoir um, or we'll find ways for doing it that way. Or do you know what else is really nice is um, even just being in the rain is lovely. Yeah. Um, and that connection is beautiful especially in barefoot as well that's one to try um, but if they do do it do reach out let me know how it goes if anybody's in Leicester and they do want to um, ask me some questions or I don't know sort out some sort of cold water shower therapy group or something that might be cool um, then yeah let's 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 make this go worldwide so that everybody's feeling the benefits not just not just the, the few because when it's the few we look like we're in a cult but if this is a cult it's a pretty good one to be in <laughs> <laughs> victoria thank you so much thank you for your time it was such a great podcast and thank you for sharing your story with us thank you for having me